hardworking, secure, defenders, courageous, relentless, tough, strong. Both service members and civilians set an expectation of what values soldiers should embody and what type of person they need to be to be accepted as a member of the military. These preconceived notions of what should define soldiers generates a culture that perpetuates the expectation of certain behaviors and attributes. Often these expectations center around personal and physical strength as well as the fortitude to accomplish any mission under any conditions. You know what they say. There's strong, and then there's army strong. Of course, this culture is not necessarily a bad thing. The army is expected to fight and win the nation's wars, a task that requires grit and tenacity not found in any other profession. These characteristics are oftentimes what makes the army great. However, with these expectations comes the pressure to embody them no matter the circumstance. I'm always worried about somebody coming in my house and hurting my family, but I'm always on guard and uh, I'm ready for anything at any time. I used to be able to determine combat zone and home, but now to me, everything's combat zone. Mental illness is typically associated with a negative stigma of weakness, helplessness, or fragility. These values are quite literally the antithesis of those expected of the Army. It is for this reason that many service members are hesitant or unwilling to seek help when they feel that they may be suffering. They feel that being perceived as weak may threaten their promotion status, the respect of their subordinates, or their career options in the Army. Miracle. We were down in the Garn Hall Valley, surrounded by mountains, and over to the left-hand side of us where I was, uh, my motor pool was at, it was Pakistan, and every day was a fight for survival. You just didn't know when it was coming, but you knew it was coming. We decided to examine this phenomenon as it pertains to the Corps of Cadets of the United States Military Academy. While most cadets have never seen combat, the academy generates a unique combination of stressors that leave many feeling overwhelmed. Our focus was to determine whether or not the stigma observed in a larger army can be translated to the Corps of Cadets, and if the same negative attitudes or fear directed towards mental illnesses are present in the cadet population. Cadets believe that uh, mental illness is a sign of weakness. You know, a lot of people are, you know, very competitive with each other, and they see that any, like, small misstep uh, can be looked at as, you know, um, you know, reflects poorly, they deserve to be lower, uh, you know, there's constant competition, uh, people are very willing to, you know, gang up on others and see, like, you know, they're not as fit for this position as I am. Uh, you know, because you're competing against each other. Uh, so I think that that's a lot of the reason that people kind of view it negatively. High achieving people. So you don't want to have that weakness that other people can see. And I think the second big one is you don't want that paperwork to follow you into the army. You know, uh, it's just like if you get hurt, you don't necessarily want to go to sick call because you don't want to be that guy that's hurt. You don't want to be that person that's not good enough or the, uh, you know, the person that's not well in the mind because you're worried that that's going to affect your career down the road or you might not even be able to commission. They want to do well, so you know, when they bring up something like that, people are not as willing, maybe, to think that they can do well. Uh, so it'll kind of tend, they'll tend to shut, shut that down, uh, trying to seek help on that. Because they think that people will see them as, like, incompetent. I think people are so worried about that because they don't fully understand it. And, I, I mean, I would be worried to uh, talk about that with the doctor because, you know, all those records, and especially with all the times that it's been hacked, 
uh, it could be out there very easily and you don't know how it's going to affect your future. Cadets don't want to seek help for mental illness because they feel like if they seek help it'll be seen as a weakness and nobody here wants to have any weaknesses because it's so competitive. If you have a weakness then you're out of the running for whatever branch or whatever um, career you're looking for after the army. The challenge here is that there's a perception that if you seek treatment then you won't be able to commission and while there are definitely some disqualifying factors to commission, seeking treatment and getting help is not necessarily one of them, uh, which deters people, I think, from seeking the treatment that they need. And more importantly, if you're struggling with mental health, like, you should be getting the help necessary. There are agencies available that will help get you treatment that isn't necessarily a non-commissionable type treatment. And translated to the, to the larger force, we ran into this issue, a lot, this issue a lot with PTSD, where people thought that if they went and sought treatment from behavioral health, that that would go on a record and that would result in them being kicked out of the army or not getting promoted, or as a sign of weakness, honestly, as a, a lot of people thought. The Academy has several support programs in place, including the Center for Personal Development, which offers comprehensive counseling to any cadet who seeks them out. However, of the surveyed cadets, only about 50% feel informed about CPD and the services they offer. One of the focuses of our study was to discuss what actions the Academy can take moving forward to try and mitigate negative or ill-conceived perceptions of mental illness present at the Academy. You just really have to highlight uh, patient privacy mm -hmm. and really educate people that don't know about it. Because for some things, it's not as important. If you wanted to fly or be a transpo officer, it's probably not as important. But, um, I mean, I think a lot of the core's fears are fairly justified. Mm -hmm. I think having officers talk to us about their personal experiences, you know, as tough as that may be to actually get done, mm -hmm. I think that I could go a long way uh, in terms of like these people that, you know, you know, we have, to, we have techs, you know, talk to us about, you know, soldiers they've dealt with in the past, um, but it's never really come from like a personal place. Um, it doesn't even necessarily have to be, you know, them specifically. It could be like other officers around them or something like that, but for whatever reason, people think that, you know, if you're in that leadership position, at least here at the academy, right, you're going to commission to be an officer in charge of people that you are not, like that you shouldn't be in charge of them if you're not right with yourself, you know, mm -hmm. like leading others when you're not, like your house isn't in order in that kind of sense. So if they, if they talk about it, you know, personal experience I think would probably be the best, most effective way to get that done. Mm -hmm. Um, just so that, you know, these people, you know, these tech officers and just general officers here and stuff like that, uh, you know, the people respect, they talk to on a daily basis and, you know, mentor people. Uh, if they talk about it, that could, I think that could help a lot. As cadets prepare to take on officership, it is essential that they are prepared to keep both themselves and their soldiers well informed about the nature of mental illnesses and how to seek out the appropriate resources without fear of repercussion or consequence. The stigma surrounding mental illness has become institutionalized in the larger army. However, as the future leaders of the army, cadets and their leadership can take strides to ensure that the marginalization of those affected by mental illness does not continue in their units, and they can work to be a positive force for change moving forward.